Yeah, this looks to be a light pole with uh, a black and white poster taped taped on as you would for, which I used to do with my band, is tape them all up all over Toronto. Um, it says, we ask everyone outside of the car to be safe so that drivers can be dangerous. That's the entirety of our approach to road safety. And so it's just taped on this pole and a lot of them have been put up close to intersections or close to intersections where there's some victim blaming infrastructure or language or spaces. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty powerful to see these out there. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman and that is Tom Flood from Will Bello Creative I'm up in Hamilton, Ontario. We're going to be catching up with Tom to see what has happened since the last time he was on the podcast in 2022. So let's get right to it with Tom. Tom Flood, welcome to the Active Towns podcast. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, Tom, you have been on the podcast before, uh, which and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, but why don't you take this opportunity just to introduce yourself? Who the heck is Tom Flood? Uh, well, number one, I'm a parent of uh, two kids, uh, a music lover, and I run a small communications agency um, that does all sorts of creative content um, and strategy work for kind of a wide, wide range of clients. But there's been a pretty serious focus on, you know, trying to reframe the the mainstream narrative around road safety, road violence, and active transportation um, in the last uh, number of years. Yeah, and reframing. I, I'm glad that you use that term, reframing, because you know, framing is. A big part of our challenge that we have in 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 our societies, I'm, I'm using that as a plural, of you know the narratives that are out there. And uh, I had Grant Ennis on, and he has, of course, the, the the book Dark PR, and it's all about the the different framings that you know Motordom uses and the oil and gas industry uses, and and all of that. And that's really part of your world. You, you I mean, your world is in fact. Uh, part of that framing of messages, and uh, so so we'll go to 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 this you know this photo here. <laughs> uh, this is from your past life. Uh, okay, confessions time. Yeah, what is this, this is, all uh, about? <laughs> so I, I began my career in advertising um, agency side, and uh, I actually began working on automotive manufacturers, and this is a. <laughs> the shirt is just is unbelievable, but um, this is um, something from an industry publication called Strategy, and it's, it talks about some of the next media stars, and it's talking about a campaign I did when we, together with many people, launched the Toyota Tundra kind of all new model in in Canada in about 2007, I think, and it was just a large campaign that I worked on, and that's kind of where I got my start. So it's kind of strange seeing where I've ended up now. Yeah, and I, I, if we zoom in, we can see, you know, involved in the launch of the Toyota Tundra, one of the biggest in the brand's history. Yeah, you were you were deep in this. Uh, and then something happened. What the yeah. heck happened? So I spent a, a number of years in, in that world. And then, you know, one day my kids were old enough to go to, to, go to school and daycare. And, and there they are. Uh, many years ago now, but uh, thought it thought it'd be kind of fun to take them on their bikes and put one on the back of mine, uh, really not knowing anything about this space. And um, the absurdity was immediate and the imbalance was so direct um, and so visceral, just just the, the, the safety and, and, and the movement for people outside of the car became really, really apparent, the, the dangers to me from, from through their perspective and through their eyes. And it's one of those things, John, that I know you know very well and people that know your podcast know very well. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that is what kind of triggered, um, you know, my involvement in this space, a place that I had no background, no qualifications, no interest in previously until I, you know, took them out on their bikes and, and just kind of saw it for what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of what has happened for you is... It's one thing to be like a parent and be like, oh, this is like hitting me across the face um, and 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 be like, OK, I'm going to retreat. I, it's too dangerous. I'm just going to drive my kids everywhere. You know, that's that's a logical, pragmatic response by a lot of parents. You didn't take that response. What what did you do? 
Well, I, I think like like some other people, I started to share some of my frustrations um, online and really from the perspective of just a, a parent um, that thought it was a little ridiculous that it was so unsafe for kids to go to school. At the time, we had these new bike lanes going in uh, near our house that would take us directly to their primary school. And what really motivated me was hearing some of the rhetoric around city council and the council chambers um, around these bike lanes, something I thought were very positive and, again, so naive at the time. <laughs> I couldn't believe people didn't actually like these. And then you started hearing, yeah, some of the rhetoric going around. And then uh, what really set me off was when certain councillors, um, you know, would, would reference myself and many other people as radical for wanting these very small safety measures for kids to get to school. So for me, that's what kind of set me down this path to try and highlight to people, you know, that this is not a radical idea for kids to be able to get to school safely and independently. Um, it's really should be what we should be normalizing. And that's kind of what set me down this path. And something that still motivates me to this day is to try to connect with a middle ground that just hasn't had their awakening or that moment of clarity yet. Yeah. And you're, you're great at coming up with these one-liners and they're sticky. Gee, you must have been in advertising or something. Uh, and, and, but then you do what naturally one would do is you put them on a t-shirt. <laughs> and so th this describes you right here, what you just talked about. I just wanted to bike with my kid. And now I spend most of my time at City Hall, obviously tongue in cheek, but this is powerful. Yeah, th this, I mean, that is what happened to me and probably to, to many people in this space. And the idea of the shirts was really, again, none of this was a part of my my plan at all. Um, it all happened very organically. I mean, one person, I think two or three years ago said, hey, can you make a, a shirt for me? And I was like, well, I don't know where to start with that. But if enough people want one, maybe maybe I'll, I'll try to do that. And then a few more people asked. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty funny too because I, I think back to that first um, the first episode that we did and uh, and I and I had to figure out okay when was that exactly and it was actually just a couple years ago it was actually on uh, let's see this is in season three and episode one hundred and nineteen there we are and uh, and in fact when we look at the image the second image that I put as as sort of the landing image uh, this image right here. This was a T-shirt as well, so it, it it's a graphic. It's out there. You 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 post these to social media, but then you also slap a lot of this stuff onto T-shirts because what the heck? Maybe somebody will want it on a T-shirt, um, or a sticker, or or something. And it, it, it's 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 very very interesting and very very cool. But let's talk. Let's take rewind just a little bit and talk a little bit about um, what has transpired. Since, you know, we last spoke um, in this platform, you and I just saw each other a few months ago in Cincinnati uh, for the Strong Tents National Gathering and seeing you. Um, but way back in 2022 with the season three, episode 119, uh, you, this was still kind of new, you know, for you. I mean, it, it, it took up, it took, it picked up some steam and some momentum during the pandemic and then, uh, you know, coming out of things in, in 2022, there there was a certain amount of stickiness and you were already producing some of the T-shirts and some of the, uh, you know, the images online. But talk a little bit about the update of what has happened uh, since 2022. Yeah, OK, I can't. Yeah, it feels a lot longer. John. I'm not sure. But yeah, two years. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, I've been. Yeah, kind of from that point, I've been doing, because of some very amazing people, been asked to do some talks and some workshops and some lectures at various universities and, and various organizations. Again, something I never really had a plan for. So that's another kind of part of um, what I've been doing through Rovelo. And again, it's usually, it's typically always um, around framing communications and language and how we talk about um, active transportation, road safety and road violence in that space. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. I've been working with amazing organizations, doing some creative work, strategy work, content work. Um, and it, it kind of just keeps rolling along. Um, I've been very fortunate to work with really, really smart people that know a lot more than I do about this space. What I try to do is help uh, help these people and organizations 
you know, take the incredible information they have and try to distill it down and, and create messages that may resonate with uh, their intended audiences. So I've been doing a lot of creative work this last year or so. And, you know, some of the, some of the work that was produced just for my, myself and my own interest, you know, continues to get picked up by various people. And it's, it's extremely flattering that people have taken some of these messages and, and place them, you know, in, in specific media spaces or, you know, guerrilla style marketing on, on the street or, you know, there's been lawn signs created. Um, it's been it's been pretty incredible to see. And it's a big hat tip to the people that are doing the really hard work out there that continue to push uh, not just messages I create, but, you know, counter messages to what's out there in the mainstream. Yeah. What does the name mean? Rovello. So, so Velo is bicycle um, in French. My kids were in French immersion at the time, and the R O were the first two initials of my kids' names. So, I love it. It may not it. be as pretentious as one might think. <laughs> well, I, and it's funny I didn't ask. The, you know, in 2022, I was like, "Oh, I should have asked Tom. What does that name mean?" <laughs> that That's makes it. sense. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so that is a fascinating, um, you know, sort of. Uh, transformation or evolution if you will of of your career and what started out as you know a, a parent just flabbergasted that you know it's so difficult to to create safe spaces for their kids uh to starting to put some messages and, and create some messages out on social media and and getting some stickiness and getting some momentum and and seeing people like responding positively towards it to suddenly getting invited by cities and getting invited by conferences for you to to speak about this. Um, and I think that that's a, a very, very important thing because as we started by talking about this, uh, opening this, this particular episode, framing is very, very important. And that's why I was so delighted to have Grant Innes, uh, you know, from that book, The Dark PR, uh, on here because you realize just how pervasive uh, that messaging is and the framing of narratives are because it can start to influence profoundly what becomes the status quo. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm an, ex I'm an example myself. I mean, I worked in, in the automotive advertising industry. Um, this is in Toronto and I would cycle in every day, uh, you know, spending 10 to 15 minutes fighting ridiculous traffic and dangerous driving and all sorts of things. And then I would spend, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day developing content in that very space. Um, and I didn't see it, you know, I wasn't aware of that. So I took, it took a real moment of clarity for me to come out of, out of that. And so for me, that's what I'm trying to do. If anything in this space is try to provide some clarity to, cause I think most people are reasonable. And I think if they're shown something in a manner that's emotional and something that they can relate to, they will have a positive response. Um, you know, because to, to your point, John, it's been a century of one-sided messaging. It's just been so insidious that people don't even realize what they don't have. I didn't realize it. And I was right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to pull up your, your website, your work page here, because this is kind of a, gives us a quick snapshot in little square images of all the different types of work that you do and are doing. Um, so yeah, so, so let's talk about the, 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 the new firm and, and what it is you do and, and how people can engage with you. Uh, I know some cities have even like hired you and what flown you out to the UK <laughs> to help uh, with them. So yeah, so let's talk about your, your work. Yeah, I should really update this site also. I'm worst at promoting this and making this updated on my site. But, um, yeah, I do a lot of creative development, creative strategy, um, and then content development, which you can see there at the top. That's a that's a logo and some content for the Midtown Trail, which is a multi-use path in Sarnia, Ontario, uh, that an amazing organization is developing there right now. So they wanted a new name, brand. Uh, so we put that together for them. Um, below that is some work with an organization called Noise, um, and they were out of Washington, D.C., but now I think based in Denver, and they are Youth Mobility Justice, and they are absolutely incredible. And that campaign there was uh, Reframe Road Safety, so speaking of reframing, and it's just trying to highlight um, 
some of the inequities uh, for certain communities and in a way that would arm some of the youth with really simple, easy messages to relate to the people in their communities. But yeah, so it's creative, it's content, it's strategy. Um, and yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be asked to come to a few different places. I was out in Birmingham in England a couple of years ago, I think now, uh, doing a few panels, a workshop, lecture, all sorts of stuff out there. And yeah, it just kind of keeps going. Um, again, I, I should have a better plan for what I want to do. I just, I don't, sadly, but I'll work on that. Well, how much do you think that the, the, you, you just alluded to the fact that you, you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants a little bit, but how much do you think that, uh, uh, that is, is the fact that this wasn't like some, you know, well thought out necessarily business plan that you went through and, you know, spent hours upon developing and you're initiating and you're doing it. The sense that I get, you know, probably not too unlike, you know, active towns and, and the way this has evolved into uh, this content creation media uh, empire <laughs> movement <laughs> that it is. Um, it's it just kind of like, oh, I'm going to follow this path and then I'm going to follow that path. Is that kind of how things have happened and kind of played out? Yeah, that, that's exactly it, John. It's been 100% organic. Uh, I mean, I've, I've put work into it, but it's been really just kind of just growing and growing until it's, you know, most of what I've been focusing on the last year or two now. And again, I'm, it's just that I've been very lucky to work with people and organizations that have really good vision and and want to make some change and and want to work together to do that. So I've been very lucky. Yeah. And you and I, you know, primarily have been, you know, interfacing over the years out on social media. I've pulled up your uh, your Instagram page here uh, uh, on screen. And, uh, and and again, this is this is the kind of the whole point is you're you're creating these messages, you're st- you're creating these sticky uh, taglines and, and things. And this is one of my favorites uh, that you've ever developed. And it's bicycles deliver the freedom that auto ads promise. And you would know since you were producing those auto ads. Um, but this is extraordinary what this is. I'm zooming in on this to, to really get to and highlight what this is. And if you wouldn't mind, can you describe this for the listening only audience uh because i think this is really powerful what it is we're looking at like the actual image yeah yeah describe this describe this you know again we we have the advantage obviously here on youtube of seeing the visual but there's going to be a a, at least you know 25 to 30 percent of the people are going to just be listening to this yeah go ahead and describe this image that we see on screen again it's super powerful yeah, there's a, a 10 by 15 foot black and white vinyl outdoor billboard uh, that says Bicycle Deliver the Freedom that Auto Ads Promise. It's white white text on black. And there's a person and her name is Cassie Smith. This was her picture uh, just standing in front of this uh, with, a, with a bicycle. And this is at a place called the London Bicycle Cafe in London, Ontario, who are really, really awesome people and wanted a message up on this space. Um, yeah, of their shop. So it's, it's pretty awesome. When you go there, you can, it's 10 by 15 is large. So, yeah. And if I zoom out just a little bit too, it's, it's not just like with some bicycles there, you know, there's, there's a bicycle rack, there's, there's a bicycle park there. There's a a really cool urban arrow there with a, a trailer that's a, a pretty snazzy uh, trailer um, that I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's a fantastic uh, cargo bike setup, which, which is just freaking amazing. Um, but this is this is kind of what I'm getting at is that this is powerful stuff. And again, this was not by design. You didn't go into this thinking, okay, I'm going to create this message. I, you, a lot of your messages end up just like looking just like this, where it's just a, a really quick little quippy thing on black, black and white. You didn't plan for this to be done this way. How did this happen? How did it end up on being this big, huge mural? Yeah, I mean, the, the initial tagline I wrote I think a couple of years ago now, uh, just on a social media post. And, you know, like you said, it was a little sticky. And it's 
someone asked for it on a shirt and I put it on a shirt and then it kind of grew from there. Then people started asking for, for posters, but you know, that was a little bit expensive for shipping for people. So offered downloadable files that people could print um, wherever they were locally. And this bike shop came out and said, um, you know, can we've, we've got the space. Do you want to, do you want to put this up? And I said, of course. And it kind of just kind of keeps going like that. There's um there's a media space in New Zealand that's running these digitally right now. It's a company called uh, Locky Dock, and they are free bicycle parking and e-bike charging stations throughout Wellington and maybe further New Zealand as well. And a gentleman by the name of Alex Dyer reached out and said, hey, these guys are really good. I think they want to put up your messages. And so they're running on those screens now too. So it, 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 again, it's, it's like I keep saying it, but it's the people that the, the real change makers on the streets are the ones that are coming to me asking to put it up. And those are the people that are doing the work. Um, this, this bicycle shop, bicycle shops, you know, kind of all over are printing these posters and, and putting them up. It's, it's their work. I just write a little bit of copy. So I'm happy that it can go somewhere. Yeah. And again, here's, here's another message on screen. I'll let you go ahead and, and introduce it. Yeah, it says streets at the top and we can either design out the conflict or we can design out our kids. It's a simple choice. Um, and that, that just comes down to a lot of this stuff is rooted really just in my, you know, raising of two kids on our streets here. And it's, it's really based on those experiences that it's not complicated. It is simple. We just have to want to do it as you know, John. Yeah. Yeah. What do you hear back, you know, on the negative side and the criticism side and say, Tom, you're just thinking about this way too simply. Yeah, I, I I think we have to think about it simply. I think we con- this gets so convoluted, so complicated, and I think that's the exact problem. I think people sometimes might relate to some of these messages because some of them distill it down to to the core of what it is. I think we've done an amazing job of overcomplicating everything. I, 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 it's unbelievable, especially when messages have been so one sided for so long. You know, we can see, for instance, we can see auto ads with you know, cars driving off cliffs, you know, empty streets, just, you know, everything just completely wild. And then you see one message that says, you know, bicycles deliver the freedom, that message and people, you know, some might be up in arms. It's just, it's, it's ludicrous. It's, it's just, but again, to me, what I think is important and to stay on track with at least client work is that we need to remember that I, I think people are reasonable. And I think if we have the right, um, the right content, the right emotion behind it, and we understand who we're speaking to, I think we can make um, some, some inroads with people. And not everything I do, John, is meant to, to make change. Some of it is just me venting frustration right. as well, of course. Right. Well, and this kind of gets to the, this particular message here. I'll let you, you go ahead and introduce it to the audience. This just says, community, can we have a safe route for our kids to walk, a bike roll to school, and city... No, a driver might get mad. That's the entirety of the discussion. And so that, again, is just, again, born out of a lot of issues that we would try to make change, very simple changes from when my kids were young. It just always came down to, you know, there's a few people that are going to potentially complain about this, so we're not going to do that. You know, and again, I know there is there, there are subtleties and nuances in these conversations, but at the core, when we really think about why we're not doing certain things, you know, we, we know where we net out. And I think that this kind of gets to the point of that very first image on the T-shirt that we shared, which is, you know, all I wanted to do as a parent was to be able to walk or bike to school with my kids. And now I spend most of my time at, at City Hall ba- doing battle. And I think that that gets to the point of the status quo. It's incredibly hard to change the status quo of our built environment, the way that our societies again, in plural, have sort of evolved into being car-centric, drive everywhere for everything. And so if you want to change that, in other words, you know, hey, is it possible? Maybe we could just have a safer route to be able to get to, you know, school or other places for our kids and our elderly and everybody else who doesn't drive. Again, 30 to 40 percent of our population are non-drivers. Is it possible? Well, you know, it's it's difficult. It's complicated. And even when the city, colon, even when the city wants to do it, 
there, it's that momentum of the status quo of, you know, supporting something that, you know, seems like it's everybody wants this, but in reality, it isn't necessarily. It, what you just mentioned was that someone might get mad. And it may be, and again, I'm glad you used the singular here of no, a driver might get mad versus all drivers might get mad. Yeah. I mean, I'm a driver myself. I, I've, I've always <laughs> driven. It's just, it's yeah. And you know, there's, there's, a, there was an assumption early on when I was in this space that, you know, well, you drive like, well, that just to me is a powerful testament to just how far this has gone. If you, if you decide that you want some safer routes for your kids to go to school, then you must not have a car and you must be anti like that's it's, it's ludicrous. And that's the stuff that kind of still motivates me. Well, and it's funny too, because you do use black and white as, as your, your primary color scheme. And it is funny how uh, people just kind of immediately jump to black and white conclusions of, well, clearly if you're this, then you must be that. It's a, it's an either or. And it's like, well, no, the nuance is I also drive too, but I'd like to have mobility choice. It'd yeah, nice and, 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 you have know, some nuance people, and some options. <laughs> people will sometimes say, "Well, how come you don't talk about driving?" Well, I mean, if I don't even answer a lot of these questions anymore, but back, like I think I think the auto industry has enough help with <laughs> promoting driving. I don't think we need to worry about that right now. Well, that's why I was so delighted to have uh, Ethan Tufts on the channel uh, from the the channel Hello Road because he's a car enthusiast. And so he really was coming about, you know, this concept of, you know what, this car addiction, car dependency really sucks. And even as a car enthusiast, I, you know, I don't get joy out of sitting in traffic and, you know, being in congestion. And as a parent, that was one of the things that really tri triggered for him. Same thing as a parent, he wanted to be able to go places with his kids by walking and biking. And John, as, as the kids get older too, it's for me, it was, I want them out of the house. I want to sit back selfishly and drink coffee while they go off to school safely and independently. I mean, there's selfish reasons that parents should want their kids to be able to have those options. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, uh, since we're here on your, your Instagram and we'll just kind of, you know, uh, scroll through a few of the different things. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, this process, the social media environment and, and, you know, because that's been a core to your new business and, and how that's been doing. So talk a little bit about that evolution over the last five years, uh, in social media and producing the content and getting it out there. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I had no real experience in, in social media when I was starting. I still don't <laughs> think I use it to the, the extent it, it could be done. But um, it was pretty amazing to see messages travel f at the very beginning um, and to really be able to connect with people all over the world. And I know it sounds really cliche, but to me, it was very new. It was very interesting to see that we all shared these very similar issues in our in our streets for just very regular you know, average parents like like myself um, had the same same experiences. So that was that was really eye opening. Um, I've kind of moved over from that other site uh, to to where I spend a lot of time on Instagram now. And really, for me, I like Instagram because you can have music on it, and music is a big part of my life. And I find music really evokes obviously emotion, and I think that's a powerful tool um, in communications and, and, and marketing. So. Um, yeah, it's been great. I mean, there's some people that are doing it so, so well. I, I would think I'm average at best using social media, but it's connected me to um, a lot of people. What's funny, I'm scrolling backwards now to, to look at the, because you mentioned that, yeah, music. And, and obviously we're not playing any of the music because YouTube has very, very strict copyright, uh, music copyright rules uh, for me to be able to do this. But uh, yeah, uh, what's funny too is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I sort of came of age in the 1980s, and so uh, you know, very. You and I have a lot of the same uh, musical interests, and and The Cure, and uh, and some other you know good stuff. New Order. <laughs> These are all bands that I used to play all the time, and and also listen to. And uh, I can remember going to the New Order concert as well in Los Angeles, and so. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, and and I think that that's an interesting reflection, though, that that you you have too of the 
that connection with the audience, putting this content out, uh, giving it a little bit of your own personality with some music, uh, you know, to it. And this particular um, uh, image that we have on screen right now, that's entitled Culture Shift. And so I talk a lot about here on the channel about creating the platform, creating the environment so that we can create a culture of activity. In other words, really supporting humans to be able to live a healthy, active lifestyle, uh, including active mobility. Walk us through this one. It's a, it's a little bit more complicated. You don't have to read through all of them. You know, folks can, can get this, but it really kind of sets the stage for the challenge we have when we try to do something that's counter to the norm, the status quo. Yeah, this this one was done with a partner, which you can't see the the name there, but it's the biking lawyer because the music <laughs> is covering it. But it's uh, the biking lawyer in Toronto, so we developed this together. But th th for the people just listening, it's you know two columns. One says normal, one says radical. Under normal, you'll see like accepting road violence, accepting road fatalities. On the radical side, you'd see uh, willing to or wanting to prevent road violence, wanting to prevent road fatalities, and just the opposite. And it's at the bottom. There's a whole there's a long list on there, but on the bottom, it says it's time to rethink what's considered normal on our streets. And again, it it comes back to what you know rooted me in this before being told by a counselor I was radical for wanting some safe spaces and safe routes for some people to get to school. And it, it just, it really stuck with me, but I think it's, I think it's important for people to see what we have deemed normal versus what we've deemed radical and really start to understand that the things that we want are not radical at all. And most of us, again, that common ground, that middle ground who haven't had their moment of clarity yet, really, if they have stopped to think about it, you know, will realize these things aren't so fringe after all, even though that's been sold to them for, for a long, long time. Yeah. And speaking of, of radical, the, 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 in your household, your, your, your big radicals are right here. These anti-car radicals. Yeah, that's, that's my youngest kid. And again, they're 11 and 13 now, but that's, that was our route to school. Uh, good, good memory, really good memories doing that. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, it's the balance, right? In this space where you love the bike to ride to school, you love the walk to school, but there's also such chaotic moments that drive you, you know, you know, to make change. Yeah. You, you mentioned it earlier too, because, you know, they do grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, this, this was started you really got motivated to do stuff when they were much younger. Uh, now they're teens, and uh, some of the common themes that come up here on the channel are, you know, that concept of free-range kids, of children being able to get around their communities because the community is inherently safe for them to do so. And so we end up profiling frequently, um, you know, especially in Central Europe. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the Netherlands and we talk a lot about just how incredibly empowering that is for you know, children, especially teens, to be able to, you know, get away from their screens and get out in real life to be with their friends and be able to get around safely in their community and really just like live their best lives as children. Um, talk a little bit about that as a parent and what you're, you're, you're hoping to see. And, and, and to frame that, to start us off, I don't know that you mentioned where the hell you live. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm, I'm in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about 45 minutes west of, of Toronto. Oh, so um, you mean you're not one of those big city elites? Not, not anymore. We were for a while, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we're in, we've been here for 10 years now. Okay. Um, and to talk about kind of, you know, uh, youth independence is that's, yeah, it is, it is the goal. Um, when our, our, we're lucky to have a park right down the street that the kids can walk to. And over the last number of years, they've been old enough to go on their own. And I kind of ship them that way. Um, and there's a hockey rink in the winter. These kids, can stay out there for four hours, five hours straight. You know, kids don't always want to be on screens. If you give them the opportunity and the places um, and the routes to get there, they will choose that. I, I, I can't say every kid, but there's a good chunk 
that will prefer to be out and about with their friends doing something that's out of the house. Um, I, I, as a parent, I absolutely love when my kids don't come home from school and they are just out for the afternoon when they're out, you know, on the local main street or just somewhere with their friends. I, 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 we're very fortunate that we have some places here that it's an opportunity for them with their school and where we live. I know that's not the case for everybody, but it is unbelievable the mental change when they are out with their friends and have opportunities to do things without us, which is, is really the goal. And it's a goal for a couple of reasons. One, it's so empowering for them, as you know, John, they just, they just feel better. They want that independence. They crave it. And two, it gives me some free time as well as a parent. Like I, like I said, these are not just, you know, crazy radical things. I think any parent might want some extra time, maybe without their kids, knowing that they're having a blast outside with their friends. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pop over to uh, back over to, to Instagram and, and pull this uh, particular uh, post that you had uh, on, on screen. We've got uh, in, in frame here, uh, we have another past guest uh, here on the pod, uh, Lanrick. And um, this brings up a challenge. This brings up a, a, a problem that we have. And I think, I think it's appropriate that you had uh, the song Nine Inch Nails were in this together, uh, you know, for, for this particular post. Uh, go ahead and frame this. Because I think this is interesting to to see the challenge that y'all are going through up there in uh, Ontario. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the, the picture is uh, our friend Lanrick Lanrick Bennett Jr. Um, on screen, split screen on CBC News, and I think in this one he was talking uh, about the proposed potential. Uh, stoppage of any sort of bicycle infrastructure going in Ontario if it's going to remove a vehicle lane. Um, and that's what we're kind of up against in Ontario with our, our premier, uh, Doug Ford, who is- Oh my God, concerned. you said his name. Oh my I should have said it. I said I it. Thought, I thought it was almost like Voldemort. We don't, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we are very lucky to have people like Lanrick, uh, you know, advocating and doing the hard work every day. He was bicycle mayor for a number of years in Toronto and, you know, a constant advocate. I got to know him as a, as a dad first and we really connected and I found out he enjoyed Nine Inch Nails. So that's how we blossomed our relationship. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm joking around uh, about Ford, uh, but yeah, I saw that coming out that uh, uh, that's not a done deal, I hope, right? Of no, it was it was just rumors coming out. But I mean, we're, we're hoping nothing comes of that. Um, you know, it, it, there's always something with with uh, Premier Ford. And that's a whole well, other episode. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> and it's a whole other episode. And, and there's history behind this, of course, with his late brother. Um, uh, you know, he that's where the, the phrase war on cars kinds of com kind of comes from. It, it comes from multiple locations. But, you know, he was infamous or saying, you know, we're going to put an end to this war on cars, referring to, you know, infrastructure that's actually, you know, makes it safe for people to be able to walk and bike to meaningful destinations. That's right. The, that's the mainstream narrative that was out there. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Tom, what other updates do you have for us uh, on what's going on? I, you know, I, sh I should have been more prepared with better updates. Um, continue to work. Uh, yeah, just lots of creative work coming up. Um, this year, I think I'm going to be back doing a few more talks and, and lectures. And I think I'm currently kind of planning spring of, uh, of next year of 2025 to do some of those. I just really had my head down in creative and strategy work the last year and a half or so. So... Yeah, that's that's it from me um, as far as updates. I wish I had more, John. Well, t talk a little bit about w the experience. You were not presenting at uh, at Strong Towns, right? You were just kind of absorbing. Yeah, I was there with a group that I do work with here in Hamilton, a local group called the Daily School Route, um, and they're an incredible organization. Their aspiration is to get 100% of kids who are able to walk, bike, and roll to school. And over the last year we were able to actually get into school as a part of curriculum uh, talking about placemaking and talking to kids about their routes to school and having them redesign their routes to school using tools that they can relate to for example minecraft or you know uh di di different different tools but minecraft was one that many kids liked and this was the grade five cohort which was 
which was the age we found that was kind of that sweet spot of just on the cusp of autonomy, but not, you know, grade seven, eight, where they can kind of go wherever they want. So it was a really good class to work with. So anyways, they redesigned their roots to school and that they presented to the local counselor at the end of the year. Really, really incredible program, which is going to be growing this year in, in Hamilton. So we'll be doing a lot of that work this year. Um, but to answer your question, I was there with them. And it was, a, yeah, it was a great, great time. It was my first time going to Strong Towns and it was very interesting. Yeah. And one of the things that I, and I'll never forget this, you know, on that final day um, at, at the uh, at the at the gathering, uh, Dan Burden had a, uh, a presentation and as often is the case when you're a content creator, uh, you know, folks will like love an image. It wasn't this image. I can't remember exactly which one it was. It might have been the one of your child in the bike lane next to the massive truck or something like that. But Dan had one of your your photos and I immediately turned around and looked across the room and saw you and, and you, you, you and I caught eye contact. I was like, yep, nope, we saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny. I, it's it's got to be flattering for you to see how sticky all of these things are and that people are grabbing them, the, the these images. Um, to the best of my knowledge, nobody's doing things that are too terribly nefarious. But, you know, having somebody, a luminary like Dan Burden, you know, profile one of your photos, you know, in his keynote presentation, it's got to be a pretty cool thing to to see and feel. Yeah, it's it's honestly been an amazing experience to see that because again, these are people that really know this space and know this stuff better than I will ever know. And so yeah, it's 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 nice. I mean, originally things were just built as a place to vent frustration and they they still are, but to see some of them travel further and and resonate with people that really understand this world is is a huge compliment. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we've got uh, the Instagram back on online here and we've got uh, a, a, a video that's kind of uh, looping through a little bit here. And it, and it kind of gives the breadth of, of sort of what you're doing is that you, you put photographs out, you put your graphics out. Sometimes you've got some video clips that are out there as well. And um, talk a little bit more about your strategy kind of how it's evolved and moving forward. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, again, I wish I had a better strategic plan, uh, John, but I, what I think for me, what I find interesting is, is obviously the visual arts and people connecting with, with imagery and, and hopefully relatively tight and interesting copy um, and, and video. So I, I, I just, overall, I think what I want to accomplish, if anything, is again, to, help wake up the middle ground by using, you know, similar techniques that mainstream marketing uses. And that's kind of the goal is that we can start marketing different, you know, you know, active transportation, road safety, whatever it is, in a similar way that we, you know, sell vehicles or we sell products um, with that same kind of emotional attachment, relatable attachment, and, and keeping things ex- as simple as possible so that people can understand them clearly. And uh, I, I, I finally turned that loop off, but uh, that was cool because that was you shooting that. And that was you. Was that your new bike? Yeah, I'm, I've been using the the good people at Risa Mueller and Curbside Cycle in Toronto uh, have let me borrow a bike for the last few months. And it's incredible. It's a, it's a load 60 and it's been, a, I'm not from the cargo bike world. This was my first one. It's, it's been a, it's incredible. It's a game changer. Yeah, I know it really is. You know, having the, having electric assist just in general is incredibly game changing. Um, but being able to make a trip to Ikea, which is what you were doing there. Um, again, things that in the past people were like, oh, well, what about if I need this, you know, you need a car. Well, you know, those those types of vehicles, those cargo bikes really kind of uh, change things a lot. The, the, I, I kind of like to wrap up with a, a theme. There's many different aspects to this theme, but let's pull this image up on screen here. And it is a theme that has emerged over the last 80 to 100 years. Um, and, and, and Peter Norton does a good job of kind of outlining the history of this theme. 
and uh, and again going back to Grant Ennis's book on reframing you had mentioned earlier uh, of of the tendency to make things seem complicated well that is actually a reframing device that motordom uses another reframing device is to point the fingers at somebody else in victim blaming walk us through what we're looking at on screen here well, there is a picture of a lion, and there is some text that says, uh, handing out high vis to people on bikes instead of building protected bike lanes is like giving patrons in the lion area of the zoo camouflage clothes instead of building fences. And then it says, be safe, be unseen. Yeah. It, it's, it's this weird thing that immediately sort of emerged um, as the automobile started taking over our streets. And it was very, very intentional. The, I have to really emphasize the fact that this was an intentional intentional strategy by motordom, including at the time the Automobile Associations AAA of the day, of the time back then. They were very powerful because they were trying to normalize driving everywhere. And so they wanted to shift the blame away from the quote unquote nut behind the wheel, which is also a, a, a shifting of responsibility too, away from the car, the actual device, as well as the system, the streets, etc., cetera, uh, and try to blame somebody else other than motordom. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a form of, of victim blaming when we say, oh, did the cyclist have a helmet on? Oh, did the kids have headphones in? Oh, were they not wearing bright clothing? Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and, and that, that foundation was laid and it's continued on forever into these cyclical campaigns, which is all we consider mainstream road safety now is, oh, it's October, it's going to be dark soon. So roll out the same, you know, box checking campaigns, be bright, you know, oh, it's schools and watch out for kids. You know, like it's the same thing over and over and over every year. We say it from the same organizations, you know, and, but it's, it's, obviously extremely problematic, especially when it's coming from voices of authority, which people do listen to. People see these these messages being mainstreamed by police, by cities, by organizations, and it just continually builds on and on and on. So the first thought is, like you just said, John, well, did the kid look both ways? You know, was he wearing headphones? Like, God forbid a kid listens to music walking to school. Like how, you know, how far we've fallen. Like we can't, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. And that's the kind of stuff that drives me crazy. And a lot of the stuff that I talk about in some of these workshops and lectures, because it's, it's still so pervasive. It's still there. It's, it's, it's the first thing you read every single time. Were they wearing dark clothing? It's just unbelievable. Yeah. And it's, in, in, it's also important to understand just how pervasive this is. Uh, Ian Walker um, out of Wales, a uh, professor uh, out of Wales, uh, writes about uh, motor normativity, car brain thinking, and just how incredibly insidious it is that even people who don't own a motor vehicle have been so profoundly impacted by the status quo of drive everywhere for everything and the benefit of the doubt given to the drivers and to the system that is, uh, you know, our automobile infrastructure and orientation of building, transforming our cities into car only places. It's it's really really difficult, I think, to to change that narrative. I'm thinking that the stickiness of some of your messages gives us some hope that, especially when we poke fun at it a little bit. I'm not very good at being snarky. You're much better at doing this and like poking people with these narratives. Do you think it's sinking in? Do you get that sense since you've been doing this that since these messages are being uh, you know adopted so enthusiastically things are starting to to gain awareness outside of our bubble because i just don't want to think that our messages are just bouncing around inside of our urbanism and active transportation bubble yeah i mean that's that's the ultimate goal and i mean main mainstreaming messages has been if I've had a goal, <laughs> I guess I've said a couple now, but have some of these counter messages being seen and visible to a more mainstream and broader audience is something that I think is really important. Um, do I think that change is happening? I, you know, it's really hard to measure, but for me, even these small, these small pieces getting out and being visible is important. I think, I think we need, <laughs> we need every win we can get 
Um, and you know, if for me, if we're not trying, then you know, what's the alternative? So I hope so. I mean, I feel pretty lucky that there's there's again I keep hat tipping, but organizations that are doing a lot of this work, creating some messages, putting them out, and making the hard change in their communities, and that's that's what kind of inspires me and gives me hope. Um, is seeing the people that are so dedicated. And when people take some of these messages, it's extremely inspiring and keeps me, uh, keeps me going. That's for sure. And I, I love the fact that, you know, the guerrilla marketing side of, of stuff, you know, continues to, to exist here, uh, to, to close this out, why don't you introduce this particular, uh, image and, and what it says? Yeah, this looks to be a light pole with uh, a black and white poster taped taped on, as you would for, which I used to do with my band, is tape them all up all over Toronto. Uh, it says, we ask everyone outside of the car to be safe so that drivers can be dangerous. That's the entirety of our approach to road safety. And so it's just taped on this pole. And a lot of them have been put up close to intersections or close to intersections where there's some victim blaming infrastructure or language or spaces. So yeah, it's pretty pretty powerful to see these out there. And this this is coming from. I mean, I I, I just, was just out on your website and I went into your shop, and you do sell some of your messages in small little stickers, but they're like two inch by three inch. How are people getting a hold of these and and then distributing them all over the world? So uh, yeah, this was again pretty organic. People were asking, can can I have these messages? And so I just set up downloadable files from my website. So you can just print them off uh, or save them from my site and then print them off and do as you wish with them. Yeah. And, and, and just to, to emphasize too, that you, you do have some depth and breadth to your creativity. It's not always just black and white. You, you've got some other fun ones here. Like the, this is one of my favorites uh, where it's like the, this sort of fake, uh, uh, is this like a fake magazine cover or, or, um, no, this is like a fake movie poster. Yeah. It's, it's like a fake movie poster with kind of like a, yeah, <laughs> it just says she, she just wanted to go for a bike ride now parking minimums haunt her dreams. And again, it's just all the stuff that we can maybe relate to from being in this space and play with. And, uh, uh, one of my favorites is your your sort of play on um, uh, again famous sort of of movies. Why don't you set up the uh, the really fun poster that you put uh, together that pokes fun or you know kind of leans into the theme of the radical kids out on bikes uh, and uh, that famous movie uh, that everybody will know about. Oh. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. I, so I'm a huge fan of the sound of music, which I think you might be referring to. And um, there's a there's a poster made a long time ago with the shot of Maria von Trapp, Julie Andrews, and 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 the and all the kids biking, as many people probably know. And it just says it's kind of done up to look like an old kind of record. And it says "Meet the Radical Cyclists," and it's got the track listing of you know no high vis, no lights, no helmets, no shoes. And it's just kind of a playoff, you know. These are kind of the textbook radical anti-car cyclists that um, our culture seems to uh, despise when it's obviously just some people biking and having some fun singing songs. Yeah. And yes, you can get that in a t-shirt as well. <laughs> oh, man. It has been so much fun catching up with you again, Tom. Uh, you keep up the great work. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. Really appreciate it and everything you do. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Tom Flood. And if you did, please, hey, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring that notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content here on the Active Towns channel, please consider supporting my efforts. It's easy to do. Just head on over to activetowns.org and click on that support tab at the top of the page. Uh, many different options, including becoming a Patreon supporter. Patrons do get access to all this video content early and ad free. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. It really means so much to me. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. 
Thank you all so much.